So welcome everyone today. I'm your guest lecturer for the day. Uh, my name is Rich McHugh. I manage the Digital Scholarship Commons in the library. And I've got a background in business. I worked for almost 20 years as a systems administrator and then got a master's in education focusing on tech. And I manage what is sort of like a, a makerspace like in the library. Um, helping me today is my colleague Nathaniel, who's a recent comp sci and physics graduate. Mm. So he's got some technical chops as well, which uh, should be helpful. And Nathaniel actually runs our 3D printer most of the time. Uh, so he has a lot of expertise, probably more than me now in 3D printing, just because he's so current. Um, so, Go ahead and talk about yeah, that's, I'm just going to grab one of these. Oh, I see. Um, I've got a little something here. It's probably not easy to see, but it's something I printed in the on one of our 3D printers, and it sits on top of your laptop, and then you can use it as sort of a document camera. You can put things underneath it. So, if anyone can figure out what this is on my shirt, just put up your hand and this highly coveted DSC 3D printed document camera is yours. Anyways, I'll leave you with that. So, first of all, we're going to do a quick show and tell of some of the things that uh, we can do in the, uh, for 3D printing. Uh, we'll review some key skills in Tinkercad, and then um, we have some projects to do so we can practice doing some design work. Uh, before we you get a hands on the project, I'll just go over the 3D printing process because it sounds like that is something that you're going to need to do in your groups for your group project. So here's a bunch of things that we 3D printed. This is actually a few years old. Uh, within the build play area, the sky's the limit, pretty much. Uh, go ahead. Uh, here's a cool project that uh, uh, someone from the uh, microbiology department did. Uh, she wanted to create biodegradable glow sticks, so she used the bioreactor in, over uh, in biology to distill bioluminescence from the ocean into a tablet format, then purified seaweed into a tube. She needed a cap for it, so she came to the workshop that we're going to be doing today to learn how to do a prototype cap. She eventually made out of metal, but for, you know, to get investors and funding, she needed a prototype, so she printed that. It took her a few tries, but it was good enough to get her some funding, and now she's running it as a business. Um, called Light by Mayoka. Anyways, these slides are online, so you can see whether you're interested. Uh, you can design your own models, of course. Uh, just one example in the library, uh, the music and media folks ran out of these little kickstands for microphones and said, hey, we've got a 3D printer, can you print them for us? I said, well, yeah, it's a little more complicated than that. So we got the calipers, which you can borrow from the front desk of the library if you do want to use calipers to measure something if you're Designing something that fit in a physical object you already have. I made a little diagram there with the measurements, designed it. Uh, actually, I used Fusion 360 for this, but you know, I could have done it in ticker tabs very easily. And then we printed off about 20 of them, so hopefully they won't run out for a long time. So, in terms of the printing process, uh, you design your model, you load it into Slicer software, which I think you were asked to download. That's the Pure software, uh, and then you submit your print job. If you had a printer in the lab, you just submit it directly to it. We do it a little bit different in the library. We've got a number of printers we created a lab out last summer uh, so that you can upload your, uh, your model with the settings that you want, and then we'll print it for you, and then you just print it or pick it up from the front door of the library after we get a notification that it's ready. In terms of uh, a 3D printer, this is one of the printers that we have. Uh, there's the build plate at the bottom there. When a print job starts, it's right up at the top. It lays down a layer, it drops down just imperceptibly, it lays down the next layer, and so on and so on. The extruder is up top, and the filament sits at the back of the computer, so it can go in. It's a spool with a thread of filament. Yeah. Is there a shirt space CHM? Sorry, DH what? Is there a shirt space Binary, right? uh, no, you're very close though. You're close. I was trying to stand still and sort of straighten it out. Uh, yeah, so go ahead, next one. 
so yeah, so you've got the slicer software, and you can see the lines, the layers. You can't really see the layers because they're so close together with the naked eye, but if you got it under a microscope, you could see those layers. And this is just a, a, a diagram example of how it will lay it down as the extruder moves around and then it pops up, moves around, pops up, or the, depending on the printer, the build plate will drop down or the extruder will go up. Go ahead. And here's just a short video. Um, go ahead and press play there. Just to show you what it looks like. Now. Uh, so it's just moving now. So, um, the object there, actually, I'll just show you this object. This object here takes about an hour, hour and a half to print. So it's not very big. Uh, the time to print depends on the layer height as well. So if you have really fine detail, you'll have a really small layer height, and that will increase the print time, as opposed to something that uh, has a thicker layer. And you really notice it on curves. If you've got a really, a really thick layer height on curves, you'll see the notches on those curves. If you go a thin layer height, those notches become less pronounced. Yeah. There we go. Hey. <laughs> One tip that we see occasionally, um, you're able to rotate around the, the model in Tinkercad and in Jira. And it's important to do that. This is an example of a print job that was submitted to us a couple of years ago. The person imported a model of a cell phone case, they wanted to put their initials on the back. For whatever reason, when she imported the model in the Tinkercad, it didn't lay down flat, it was on a bit of a tilted angle. She didn't notice that, and was just looking at it straight on. She thought she was putting her initials or her name flat on the thing. When I received the print job, I rotated around and I realized that it was not flat, even though it looked like it on front, but when you rotated around, you could see it wasn't flat. So make sure that you're rotating around make so that things are actually where you mean them to be. Uh, yeah, you want them to be. Supports is another issue. Um, if you have overhangs on your model, it can't print in air, or else you get things happening like on the left there. It will eventually join up, and it will be a spaghetti mess until it uh, joins together. The one in the middle is what it looks like with supports. Uh, so it looks a bit of a mess, but those actually snap off pretty easily. Once you snap it off, you get something like that on the side. We do have some extruders that support um, dissolvable filament. The only thing is, is that dissolvable filament costs twice as much as regular filament, and it increases the amount of time that it takes to print. So if you've got just a little bit of dissolvable filament to support one element, it's not too bad, but some things like this would take quite a bit. Uh, the dissolvable filament would probably cost more than the material for the actual uh, triceratops. Yeah? So your shirt is CHM, right? Computer History Museum? Oh, I thought you said D. Oh no, he says C H M. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we'll give that to you after. Yeah, I, I've uh, I've broken my eardrums a couple of times doing different things, so I'm sorry I misheard you. And it's probably the mask that's called me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Computer History Museum down in San Jose. So good job. I'll we'll have to figure out a way to give that to the other ones too. Uh, go ahead. Uh, the other thing is infill. So inside of the objects you it's not really an issue with this because it's pretty flat but if you have like a, a skull or something like that that was closed in it will put infill in it and you can tell it how much infill you want um, so that's 10 percent 5 percent and 20 percent for example so the stronger you want the object to be uh, the more infill typically you'll have it is sort of diminishing returns i'm sure the mechanic the yeah, mechanical engineer they could explain why but at a certain point, you're not going to get much extra strength uh, out of you know, increasing the percentage of infill. Um, there's also the wall um, thickness, and again, that will help strengthen it too if you have a thicker wall. If it's just a model to look at, like a design model, you don't need to worry about it. You can go, you know, 10, probably would go 5%, but you can go 10% no problem at all, and it'll hold up just fine. Do you have any questions about? What I've covered so far, we've got a little bit more to do. Yeah? About the supporting material, uh, maybe one way of creating the supporting part, or is there soft software called like creating the The software will do it for you. 
and it's literally a checkbox. And uh, I'll talk about this when we get to the Cure software a bit more, but if you're not sure if you need supports, just hit the checkbox. If, you, if your model doesn't need support, then it won't put it there even though you click the checkbox. Good question. Okay. Uh, we do have a couple of different types of material for our printers. So PLA is what 95% of what we print with. Um, it's made of uh, uh, sugar cane and sugar meat. And it is biodegradable over a number of years. It actually biodegrades pretty quick if it's put into a commercial composter. But if you just put it in the garbage, it's going to probably take 10 or 15 years to biodegrade. But it will. The only part of it that doesn't biodegrade is the, is the color picking. Uh, the other thing is PVA, and it's closely related. Uh, it's made out of the same materials, but they, again, I'm not a chemist, they do something a little bit different. And it'll dissolve in water, which is pretty cool. So that if you have a model that you really want to look nice on all sides, like that Amstel, for example, uh, you use the, the PVA, and it does take a while like, for a bigger model for it all to dissolve and end up getting an old toothbrush out because the last little bit soft, but it is very nice. You get high quality models with it. The last one is TPU95, and it's a flexible material, so if you want something with a little bit of give to it, like uh, we've done door jams, I uh, made custom you get COVID door jams back just before the campus closed back in 2020. Initially, we did out of uh, PLA, but they were pretty rigid and they were hard to get them to stick. But the ones out of TPU95 were like regular door jams that you probably see around. Any questions about materials? One question we sometimes have is about colors. Uh, typically, we'll, we'll give you the option of the colors that are currently in our five printers. Six? <laughs> Five or six, depending on if anything's broken at any given time. We'll give you the option of those colors, unless there's a really good reason to have a different color. So if we had, say, all white in our printers for some reason, and you were printing a chess set, we obviously wouldn't print both sides white or white. We'd do black or something like that. Uh, but, so if you do have a preference, let us know, and let us know how important that is. And that's just because it's a pain in the butt to be swapping out. Uh, I'm consuming. So these are for the 3D design part of the workshop today, and this is the hands-on part. These are uh, some hands-on exercises we have to create things in Tinkercad. Um, this thing down here is quite easy. It's a cell phone stand for your phone. You do have to measure the width of your, your cell phone with its case in order to get it to work. But that uh, is pretty easy. That's our Valentine's Day activity little box with gloves on it. We've got a couple of uh, uh, tree ornaments like the snow person and the snowflake. Again, there have been so you can hang them up on a Christmas tree. We've got a keychain up there. And if you want to get more challenging, you can do some dice. The nice thing about the dice is you can make them loaded dice. Not that I would encourage cheating in dice games. But what we do is we can have you create one and then make a copy of that. And then put an air cavity under one of the numbers. And then you typically, in this case, you'd actually increase the infill depending on how obvious you wanted it to be or how, how biased it is towards that number. The heavier it is, the more it'll go to the you know, come up with that. And it will come up all the time, of course, but roll it enough. So a good stats or psychology experiment for those games. Or a money maker for that um, Any questions about the activities? We'll give you the link to it in just a minute to get going. We'll go ahead to the next. Mm -hmm. um, so Tinkercad.com is the uh, tool we're going to be using. I'm just going to quickly do a, a demo of Kira for you. Um, so here's Kira software. Oh, why isn't it zooming? Oh great, now it's frozen on me. Let me exit out. So the Cura software, basically once you've made your model, you load it in and then you can tell it how much infill you want, whether or not there are supports, um, what, the, what the layer height is for the, uh, 
for the, whether or not it's fine detail or not that you need it used for. You know what, we'll come back to that after. I'll make sure it's working. So what I'd ask you to do now, if you haven't already, um, go to tinkercat.com and you can create a personal account there for yourself. One nice thing about Tinkercat is you can go between computers, just as long as it has a web browser, you'll be able to get all of your models. And it's similar to Google Docs in that you don't have to have a save button, it just saves it automatically. Uh, so if something happens with your browser, uh, you know, you might lose one or two things that you've recently done that you don't have to worry about auto saving. Just open up Tinkercat online. So, uh, do we have the... I can't remember if we have a short link to... We, this is the first time I'm doing this workshop in person since pre-COVID. So, um, usually I just put in the chat a link to the uh, to the URL. So if I could, I'll just get you to follow along with me. If you open up a Google search and go uh, UVIC DSC, as in Digital Scholarship Commons, and hit enter, the first hit should be UVIC Libraries Digital Scholarship Commons. So UVIC D Delta, what is it? Sierra Charlie? Yeah, I think that's it. Delta Sierra Charlie. Uh, you'll go find our website here. There's a workshops tab and then go to workshop lesson plans, Creative Commons license. If you click on that, you'll see all of our workshops and very handily, the very first one under Makerspace tools is 3D design and print. So if you click on that one, it'll open up the, the activities for the workshop. Oh, good. Thank you. So, Delta, Sierra, Charlie, UVic, you'll be able to find our website. So, what we want to go to now, if you want to see the slides that I just went through, if you go to Workshop Activities and Activities Introduction, there's the slides there along with the video that's basically a repeat of what we did. And then there's the activities below there. So, if we open up the keychain one here, um, you can see it's step-by-step -step instructions with some animated GIFs. What we recommend you do, though, I'm just going to open up Tinkercad. I forgot to do that. But what we recommend you do is once you've got Tinkercad opened up and you've got the instructions opened up, uh, uh, email, sorry. I should have logged in before. What we recommend you do, so get the instructions out, grab that, the web browser, and drag it all the way over so it's as narrow as possible. And then grab your Tinkercad tab, drag it over here, and then make it as wide as possible. And that'll allow you to, uh, so let's say I want to start with the cell phone key stand, I go to that activity instruction, I can scroll through the instruction and then work on the activity there. So maybe we'll spend at least a half hour if you want to start working through the activity of your choice there. Nathaniel and I will wander out and help. And then I'll make sure that uh, Pura is happy on my computer and then we'll do a little demo of Pura. And you can practice exporting whatever you've created, import it into Pura, and then play around with the settings while we're on the demo.
So can I, oh, let me turn this on. Can I get everyone's attention for just one minute? I'll just go through the, the printing process with you. I'm just going to open up a model. This is the, uh, this is the Corona wedge that I told you about before. Uh, not a very fancy model, but it worked. So what I'm going to do, let's say I want to print this. I will export it. Uh, STL is probably the simplest format for us to work with, so I'll export it to STL format. And actually all of the activities have this process to export. And I'll save it to my downloads folder so I can find it. Uh, normally you don't need to go into Cura to like a regular person printing. You would you just send us our, your STL model and on the web form fill out what you want. But it would be good for all of you, of course, to make sure that you've loaded into Kira so it's going to perform the way you want it to. So I'll switch over to Kira. And then I will file and open. And I'm going to open that wedge. And I'm going to look around it just to make sure that, yeah, there's nothing weird going on that I missed in my design. Over on the right side, it's got the settings. So this, the default settings for uh, printing is 0 0.15 millimeter. You shouldn't need to go any finer than that unless you've got really fine detail on your model. But uh, Nathaniel will probably be seeing all of your print jobs before he prints them. So uh, if you have any questions, he can ask Nathaniel about technical details. The other thing is the infill. I think the default infill is 20%. That's down here. And that's just fine. Uh, you could go lighter, but you wouldn't need to go heavier unless it's something that you're going to use as a tool and put some leverage on it. And then the last thing is uh, is the uh, supports. Oh, sorry. That was supports there and then uh, infill. So if we scroll down here, there's the infill. And further down, there's, oh, there's the support. So everywhere, the default is to support anything with a 60% or more overhang. And you probably don't need to mess, mess with that. Sorry, I should have gone to this. This is what you'll see normally. I went into the advanced mode. So this is the, uh, the thickness layer. So 0.15 is fine. 20% infill is just fine. And then supports on. So it's just a checkbox to put supports on and off. And build plate adhesion, um, basically it puts something around the edge just so you don't have lifting on the edge of your model. So it adds a little bit of extra filament on the edge to keep it flat and not moving around on the model. So it's good to have the adhesion. Is there anything else I should add here, Nathaniel, that... Okay. Yeah, we don't we don't want to get into that. Nathaniel will deal with temperature, but uh, yeah. But if you look on the bottom right corner here, you see it gives you an estimated time to complete. So this is going to take four hours and eighteen minutes. It's not really that big, but it it does take a while to print larger objects. Uh, if you're and then it gives you the weight of the uh, material, so 37 grams. Uh, for students just coming in wanting to print, most of our services are free, but we do charge for the cost of material for students just coming in who want to print. And we charge 10 cents a gram, so this wedge would cost $3.70. For your projects, that's covered in the course, so we'll give you instructions on how to identify it so that Nathaniel doesn't come after you for money uh, and he'll just print, print them. The other thing we can do is hit the preview button here. And again, this is the, uh, the adhesion around the edge, just a little flat thing to keep it down there. You know what, I'm gonna do one other thing. I'm gonna import one other object just so you can see what overhangs look like. Wow. Just bring in the snow, snow person.
So here's our snow person. Uh, we're in preview mode here, so this is what it looks like normally. I've got the supports on, and you can see that the blue there is the supports. If I turn supports off, that blue goes away, but you'll have drooping elements, like the brim of the hat for sure will be sort of a bit of a mess, as well as the nose probably won't form at all. So that's why, even though it looks okay here, you, this model definitely needs the supports. The, uh, the door wedge, it doesn't need the supports, but it doesn't hurt to turn them on. So, um, I guess they could submit one from, from Kira, Kira file to you if they wanted. So let's say this is my model. I want to submit it to Nathaniel. I'll go up to File and save the project. It's just giving me the settings here. I'll hit Save. And UM3, for whatever reason, it puts that at the beginning of the file names. And I'll hit Save. The next step, and you'll get instructions on how to do this, is to go to the library website. And there's a 3D printing tab up top. And if you're wondering uh, details about 3D printing, we've, I've covered most of it right now, but there's a whole, this is basically the fact for 3D printing, so you can go through, learn about it. But if you're ready to print, you just go to print now. You click on that, this opens up the web application. You'll be asked for your username and password. And I'll click create a new print job. You wouldn't have anything there because you haven't printed yet. I'll call this uh, CSC project. I'll choose the file and it's got a maximum of 200 megabytes, but that hopefully won't be a problem. My snow person is 206 kilobytes. Um, the infill, the default here is 10%. Uh, so you can make it 20% if you want. Scale, some objects you want to scale up or down. In this case, we're leaving it at 100%, whatever you designed it. Layer height, you can select the layer height. Supports, yes. And how many copies you want. You can also select material down here. Typically, it's just going to be PLA, um, but potentially you might have dissolving filament depending on the design, but it will cost a fair bit more with the the P PLA plus PVA. And I'll just put read me Nathaniel and submit. So there's my project there. An email is fired off to Nathaniel. He'll look at it tomorrow morning. He'll actually load it into Cura and price it for you. You'll get an email back saying, in your case, you won't get an email for your group projects. You'll just say it's printing, but if it was a paid for personal project, You'd say that'll cost you know three dollars and seventy cents or two dollars or whatever it is and then you'll get an email when it's ready to be picked up at the front door of the library if you'd like to see our printers you can come up to the third floor of the library uh, they're right across from uh, nathaniel's office we're in the new part of the building newer part of the building uh, third floor it's as far away from the front door as you can get um, but are there any questions about printing We'll give you specific details on what to do to submit your group projects because it will be a little bit different than the um, than this page will describe here just because it assumes that the students, faculty, or staff would be just paying out of pocket uh, for their print jobs, but, uh, but it'll be pretty similar to what I just showed, showed you there. Is there anything I haven't covered that... Yeah, I think that's all yeah. you guys all send it to the and you'll 